Alright guys, so today we're going to go over custom brushes. So, if you look at this nice piece of art here, this Cat Tank by Mike Yamada, you're looking at this and you're probably thinking, oh wow, that's a really nice traditional art. But not so much. This is probably actually done traditionally. Now, you're wondering, well, I don't know man, it looks like ink. Look how sharp that is. I've been in Photoshop and it's a little hard to get those kind of sharp lines. Well, today I'm going to show you a couple of tricks I learned over the years. And I'm going to show you how to get a kind of a traditional look out of your uh, digital digital stuff, okay? Now a lot of you have probably used custom brushes before, and you're quite familiar. I'm sure you've been on DeviantArt and found some really great artists. They post their custom brushes, and you think, wow, I've got it, right? The holy grail. I will now have this artist's style. But then you can't even get your brush to work the way theirs works. Well, what they don't tell you, what I've never seen on the internet before, is how to properly use custom brushes or how to get the right settings for each brush and switch between those settings very easily okay the secret is if you'll look over here on the right here I've got my brush presets which is where you would load your custom brushes right I've loaded plenty in my day as you can see here what they don't tell you is that you also probably need tool presets okay I've never seen someone on the internet talk about tool presets but this is so useful okay you've got your brush preset let's find a nice custom brush preset for instance I've got uh, let me see see if I have my watercolor brush which I'm specific especially proud of okay so this is I believe my watercolor brush and I'll show you what that does I'll just grab some uh, red uh, let me make it a little smaller so as you can see, it looks like watercolor, right? It's got a nice rough look to it. Looks like it was done on watercolor paper, and it's got that nice kind of transparent look. If I come in here with some purple, I can do some nice blending. Beautiful, great for backgrounds, great for filling in a uh, watercolor illustration, whatever I want, right? But let's say I wanna put a nice ink line on top of that. So then I switch over to my ink wide right well that's not cool I need this to be like you know black and I want this to have like thick and thin lines right and I don't want it to be transparent and low flow so here I am switching back all of these settings and now I want to go back to my watercolor brush well now I've lost all my watercolor effects because I changed all those settings what the crap right okay so I can't be switching back and forth between these settings all the time so instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my watercolor brush the way I like it. Right now I've got my ink the way I like it. Right? So I'm going to save that tool preset. And these are all alphabetically listed, so I'm going to put 0, 1, so it'll show up at the top. Uh, ink brush. Okay, and I've already got that saved, so I'm not going to save it. So, 0, 3, ink. Lovely, right? Got those nice, sharp, crisp lines. If you look at Mike Yamada's work here, it looks like he did it in ink, right? Well, that's actually in Photoshop. You just gotta get your brush small enough. And you might also be wondering if you've used a lot of, if you've played with custom brushes before, you're probably wondering how I'm able to get that nice, sharp, crisp line. Okay, because Photoshop for years I couldn't get those nice, sharp, crisp lines and I was wondering what was going on. First of all, you do have to have decent resolution okay so you gotta up it to 300 resolution or well 72 300 is fine it doesn't really matter what matters is you gotta have megapixels okay at least two or three thousand worth of pixels in here if not make your image bigger once it's big enough then get this brush setting you get these sharp crisp lines there's a trick to it okay you go to your t brush settings okay brush tip shape over here, if you've got a circle brush, then go ahead and squash that a little bit. Okay, if you make it perfectly round, it doesn't work so well. But if you squash it, you get nice, thick, sharp lines. And the other trick to this is you've got to go to Shape Dynamics. And of course, size, jitter, uh, you want the pen pressure to affect the size, which is basically the same thing as this brush, this button right here. All of you already know about that, but what you don't know about is initial direction. Okay, if it's off, then my brush, you know, it all depends on the angle of this brush, right? So this is sideways, so it's a sideways brush. 
but it doesn't work when I go up and down I get thick right then when I go sideways I get thin well go back to your shape dynamics change the angle to not pen pressure but initial direction okay so if I start in this direction right so if I once if I'm going downwards then it changes the angle of the brush if I'm going sideways it changes the angle to match that and then when I curve and change the direction I get thick as I'm curving and then when I stop it starts to go back thin again okay lovely stuff gives you that nice ink look and I can jitter that a little bit if I turn up the jitter then it makes it like a little bit rough on the edges right which is how he got this nice rough but sharp line so if you want it clean no jitter if you want a little bit rough more traditional style then add a little jitter to that okay and the other trick too is you could do a little bit of spacing okay spacing will give you a little bit more of a rough style brush okay so if I crank up the spacing on that you'll see I get a very rough brush whereas if I do no spacing at all then I get a, I get a much sharper cleaner brush line make sense excellent so that's how you want your ink brush but not your watercolor brush so let me go switch over to my tool presets which are gone let's go to window tool presets and in your tool presets I'm gonna click on watercolor brush which you don't have yet nice big circle okay and obviously the settings on this are quite different okay here I do not have thick and thin I do not want this brush getting smaller when there's less pressure I want it to stay big what I do want is for the flow to be low right or to be well actually I don't have those settings on but I could make it to where for instance press these two buttons and now right it gets darker and darker as I go back and forth okay if you want it a little bit see-through turn on your opacity if you want it to get more and more opaque as you go back and forth turn your flow below 15 percent okay that's if you want it to get right if you don't want to have to like stop and start stop and start if you want to go back and forth flow if you don't want to go back and forth opacity right no matter how far no matter how many times I go back and forth it doesn't get more opaque until I start again then it gets more opaque then I start again it gets more opaque and I start again it gets more opaque that's your opacity if you want it back and forth again flow now how do I get that rough texture well in your brushes you need to do dual brush and there you would choose one of your nice little textured ones okay and with dual brush you get that nice uh, it looks like it's on paper like really rough paper so that's how that brush is done and of course those are totally different than my ink settings so I'm gonna save that tool preset and I'm gonna number them according to the uh, priority okay if I want at the very top number one next would be number two number three and the rest of these as you can see all the I's are together all the L's are together it's alphabetical okay other thing you need to know about custom brushes okay you download this great brush by your favorite artist right but if you don't have the right settings you're not gonna see what's good about that brush for example let's say you were to download my watercolor brush and you want you're looking for that nice watercolor effect so you go and you choose Mike Yamada's nice little shade of purple there and then when you paint with it it doesn't look anything like watercolor right this freaking Sean guy gave me this whack watercolor brush doesn't even work well you're not gonna be able to see if it works or not until you get the right settings turn your flow down to 15 percent that will help you to see if it's a textured brush okay so 15 percent flow 15 percent your friend remember him okay also if you want the pen pressure to affect the flow you turn on this button right here pen pressure will now affect it and then I can grab this lighter color and as you can see yay blending okay custom brushes check to see if it if you need to turn down your opacity and or your flow to get the effect okay once you get the effect the way you like it save it and then last but not least you may someday have to switch computers your computer will not last forever so save your brushes you gotta save both your brushes and you gotta save your tool presets if you load tool presets without the brushes, it's not going to work very well. Okay, so save tool presets. All right, I'll export my brushes, and you can try out the ones that I have, the ones that I've made over the years. And uh, if you like them, let me know, 
and uh, I'll share them with more people. Okay, so that's it for custom brushes. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I hope your art comes out exactly like your favorite artists.